I believe in miracles. I don't have to tell you. I don't even have to remind you. You know that I believe in miracles and I feel sorry for the human being today who does not believe in the supernatural power of Almighty God. We forget sometimes that God is still God Almighty. And there is no such thing as failure with him. Oh, we're going to have the greatest time today. When I tell you that the name of my guest is Sid Roth, that's thrilling in itself. <laughs> I'm so excited about it because... Sid Roth is one of those wonderful young businessmen from Washington, D.C., who uh, has had this glorious experience of knowing the Messiah in the forgiveness of his sins. Sid Roth, first of all, I want you to know how wonderful it is to have you as my guest today. I am privilege to have you, believe me, and to know that we're related. <laughs> now, there will be thousands of folks who won't understand that. Somebody with a name like Catherine Kuhlman and a man with a name like Sid Roth, and they wonder how in the world we can be related. We belong to the same family, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. That in itself is a miracle, you know it. Well, Sid the Washington Daily News classes you with uh, other very prominent young men in business in our nation's capital as white-collar Jesus freaks. I think that's the greatest compliment that, that they could pay you, fellas. Really? How in the world did you ever get involved with Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, considering that I come from an Orthodox Jewish background, that's uh, it'd take more than a couple of seconds to give you an answer. I, I know. And, and you're a very successful stockbroker in Washington, D.C. You've been in this business for how many years? Well, I'm 31 years old, and I've been in the stock business about eight years, and I've been in the business of Jesus Christ about one year. I'm one year old, my Lord. <laughs> And you're a great success both as uh, a Christian and as a stockbroker. A very successful Christian and a very successful stockbroker. Well, tell me, all right, tell me about your early training as an Orthodox Jew. Well, coming from a family where my father is a deep believer in God, he gave me the traditional background of training. Um, I went to his called Cheder, Hebrew school. I was bar mitzvah at 13. That's when a Jewish boy becomes a man. And my family was steeped and deep in the ritual and the tradition of Judaism. And I feel, actually today, I feel more Jewish than I've ever felt in my life because that's I'm very right. proud. Th that's all oh, said, please. I, I feel that same way about uh, a Jew coming and accepting uh, Christ as the true Messiah. You are a better Jew than you've ever been in your life before, right? right? I believe that now I'm truly an Orthodox Jew. A whole Jew. I believe this. So do I. So, being brought up in an Orthodox, as a, an Orthodox Jew, 
And uh, how did you ever get involved? Well, you know, to me, the Jewish religion, as proud as I am of it, it's not today the way it started. It's not God-centered. It's more man-centered. And I never felt, for 30 years of my life, uh, a need or a closeness or a reality of God. And today I do. Fortunately for me, God knew my heart, and he put me in a position. You see, I, being a salesman, successful in sales, I've read every book on positive thinking, and uh, I, I, I began to believe that the man, the individual, can do anything. And so what God did is he backed me into a corner, stripped me of everything. He got me involved in the psychic world, and... Uh, I didn't realize I was tying in with the devil when I was involved in astrology and in uh, mind control activities. How did you ever get involved with that? I was looking for power. Uh, I found a power there. I found that astrology isn't fake. It works. The I brilliant found... mind. You, you, had, you have a mind that works very quickly. It, it is, uh, you like to explore the unknown. I, I was looking for power and I found sure. it. Let me tell you about some of the things that I was able to do, and I'm not saying that I'm bragging, I'm trying to explain it to you. Uh, I was able to open up a dictionary and ask myself a specific question and just turn it random and point to a word and I'd have an exact answer to my question. I was able to close my eyes and you, someone would give me the name of someone I'd never heard of before and I could describe them and tell you what was wrong with them physically. And, I thought that this power was really tremendous. I began to be able to impose my will on people. And then all of a sudden, within me, a feeling said, where is the power coming from? And I went to the instructor that taught me the course, and I said, where's the power coming from? And he didn't know. So he sent me to the instructor for the whole East Coast for this particular course. And I asked him the same question, and he wasn't able to answer my question. And I remember at the time, I had met a lot of born-again Christians, and they started telling me about Deuteronomy 18, in which the Lord Jesus Christ forbids having anything to do with this sort of activity. And I asked him about it at the time, and he said to me, Sid, the only evil is in your mind. That's the only hang-up. There's no such thing as the devil. And I walked away from that man not being completely satisfied because although he told me what it wasn't, he didn't tell me what it was. He didn't tell me who I was tied into. And then... He was still not satisfied. No, uh, Jesus Christ, he's, you know, he knew how tough it was being a Jew to get to me. And uh, I praise him for what he did. Time after time, little things, like I'd go to my car and find a tract about Jesus just happened to be laying nearby there. I'd quit, I quit my job in this search for power, and uh, I decided to hang out my own shingle, to go into the investment <laughs> business for myself, and because I had this great ability, why should I work for someone else? And the first fellow I bump into says, Sid, I've got an extra office, a secretary, a desk. I'll let you have it at no charge until you get on your feet. Telephone, would you like it? Sure. You know, this, this was my mind, I felt. It was God. Turns out this fellow, though he was in the computer business, was a born-again Christian, had prayer meetings there morning, noon, and night. More born-again Christians were walking in and out of those doors, holding prayer meetings for me, fasting for me. Did you know it? And I didn't know it. And I... And and the thing is, this is how beautiful that God works. I had nothing to do with this. This was God laying it on their heart to pray for me. And then God had a few other things happen within the occult to me. For instance, I, I remember one day I was in a seance type meeting and I had my eyes closed and all of a sudden I saw something come out of my body and it was me. And I told the lady next to me and she says, oh, that's terrific, that's your astral soul that has just come out of your body. But be very careful because sometimes when you're new at this, your astral soul won't find its way back into your body. And this scared the heck out of me. <laughs> then the next day, next day I talked to someone and they said, by the way, Sid, and you know, this is a completely different person. They say, if this astral soul of yours uh, comes out of your body while you're, uh, it was explained to me that while you're sleeping, your astral soul goes out of your body and you don't even know this. And so now here, my soul's going out of my body. I don't know it. I may wake up and my, my soul won't be back in. And I'm really worried at this point. And then I get a hold of a book, which the Lord uh, gave to me. I went into a bookstore to get some books on psychic phenomena. And I saw one book called The Bible, The Jew, and The Supernatural. Didn't know a thing about it, but, you know, I was interested in, in I was Jewish and in the supernatural. So I started reading this book, and it talks about 
Brian Epstein of the Beatles and a number of other prominent Jews that have lost their lives. The reason being they fooled with the occult because it's a sin for anyone to fool with the occult. That's but it's a greater sin for a Jew to fool with it. And, you know, we're so prone to do this, being Jews looking for power and not having had it for 2,000 years because we, we didn't realize that Jesus Christ was our Messiah. But anyway, these things kept happening. I read this book and it described, it was sort of like uh, when you break into the occult, there's a manhole cover. And you can take one step over that manhole cover and get into the supernatural world. But the only way back is straight down into hell. And I remember all of these things happening to me and I came home at night. I had a mezuzah, that's a, a, a Jewish uh, a thing with the Torah in it, around my neck. I had a Bible, which I'd gotten by that point. I put that under my pillow. I said to my wife, who uh, was born Baptist and converted to Judaism, I knew she knew more about God than I did, say a prayer for me. So, so I had the Jewish God. I had uh, her saying a prayer to Jesus. I had the Bible under my pillow. I was afraid to close my eyes because of the fear of this thing about my soul leaving. That, that God did this. Now, looking back, it's, you know, I can laugh and joke at it, but it, it was a very serious thing. And I, although I didn't say it with my, my mouth, with my heart, I said, God, you're the only one I can turn to. And you know something? He was, he was there. He was there. And praise God, so many beautiful things have, have been happening since I've invited them into my heart. What was your experience that moment, that new birth experience? It was the most yes. real thing in the world to you. Jesus Christ is as real to me as you are sitting right opposite me. And I know what you're talking and, about. And you know the thing I want to emphasize is I had, because I guess I was Jewish and he just had to hit me over the head over and over and over, and I like to tell my story because he did. I, I want to emphasize the point that the Bible says the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which is a tiny, tiny little seed. And you take Jesus Christ, which is this tiny little seed, and you put him into your heart and you feed him with the word, and he'll grow just like that acorn isn't an oak tree instantaneously. Jesus Christ doesn't grow instantaneously. He grows on faith. And I know from my own personal experience and from the experience of many of my friends that if you'll invite him into your heart, he's on the outside. It's sort of like you're driving an automobile, you know, and he has a difficult time driving your car from the outside, but he can do it because he's God. And look what he did to my life. But you know, when you invite him inside that automobile, you know what happens? It's a heck of a lot easier for him, and that's where <laughs> he wants to go. And boy, I'm, I'm just so grateful to him, and I, I feel like I can't do him enough justice for what he's done for me. Do you know that this is a very successful stockbroker who's talking? This is a businessman from our nation's capital. A successful stockbroker. But Sid, it's real, it's now. It isn't something in the past, it's Jesus now. This wonderful relationship now. That this is what's so exciting. In other words, like I'm telling you what happened a year ago. But you know, if I can't tell you what happened yesterday or the day before or two days ago, I'm in serious trouble with God because he's so real. Every single day he influences my life. Uh, just a couple days ago, I was giving a talk at a junior college uh, for uh, mutual funds. This was an adult education class. And the professor was a client of mine. He said, Sid, I know where you stand with God. Don't, don't give uh, anything about God during this talk because it's a school, you know. And I, I said, okay, these are the ground rules, fine. But I wore a little pin that said PTL. And the very last question from the, from the students was, what does PTL stand for? Praise God, you know, he planted that question. And I said, well, the professor has said that I cannot comment on this until after class. However, anyone that's interested in staying, I'm going to tell you about the most important thing in my life. And 10 students stayed, and I talked for about an hour about PTL, which is praise the Lord. <laughs> and two people accepted Jesus Christ. One was Jewish. And uh, it's just, this is Jesus Christ. Now, you see, I... Uh, I had nothing whatsoever to do with it. As a matter of fact, that particular Monday night, I was asked to talk at a church for a, a, a bunch of, of Christians that most of them were not born again, have not gone through this experience that I'm talking about. And I really wanted to go to that church more than talking about investments. And I was trying to figure out some way in my mind to get out of that talk. But you see how beautiful God is? Uh -huh. Instead of me doing my will, God blocked me. I couldn't get out of that talk for anything. 
I had to give that talk, and two souls came to Jesus Christ. What's your mother's attitude about all of this? Well... Is there an understanding? A mother is a mother. Uh, yes, there's an understanding. But when it comes to Judaism, there's something ingrained. That's, uh, it's a shame that so many people think of Christianity uh, in, in, in the light of what it really isn't. In other words, when you read the Bible and find out what a Christian is, you know most of the things that have gone on for the last hundred years in the name of Christianity really aren't. I've got a cousin that uh, was, was in Germany when Hitler was there, and she had twin children. And she, uh, the Gestapo took one of the children and threw him out the window and uh, died. And in her mind, this is Christianity. This is the Christians did it. They don't understand. A lot of people take the title Christian, but they're not. Yes. Unless you're born again and know Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter where you're born. It doesn't matter whether you're born in a Jewish home or a Christian home. It's a new birth. It's a brand new experience. And if you haven't had it, you haven't, you haven't had life. You, have, you, you haven't experienced anything as the businessmen in that article. They're all very, very successful, and money just can't buy what I'm talking about. And most people can't, I can't put it in words. You have to experience Jesus Christ. Tell him to come into your heart and take over your life. The scripture says, flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. It's a spiritual revelation. It's not the intellect. Yeah, yeah you, you depended on the intellect for so long, didn't you? That's right. You're a brilliant young man. Just from the very short time that I have had an association with you. Sid Roth, you're a brilliant young man. You've always known that you had this ability when it would come to the mind. And you sought everything through the mind, but you don't get this experience through the mind. You've got to approach the kingdom of heaven like a child. It's a hard thing. Has it changed you completely? Well, my wife says, you're not the man that I married. I'm a completely <laughs> new person, and I praise God for it because I didn't care for the old Sid Roth. <laughs> and you knew the old Sid Roth better than anyone else. That's it. Every person has to live with himself. And Sid, you and I would be amazed what a mask most folk have. Covering up the real person that they are. That's what's so beautiful about Jesus. You don't have to cover up. You don't even have to direct. Because he becomes your Lord. He just takes this hunk of dust, which he created, and he tells us what to do. He's my boss. If, uh, and he, boy, he's doing such a beautiful job of running my life, I wouldn't want to take it over again for anything. He's, well, look at this. Here's a, a Jewish boy that knew nothing about Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, the only thing I knew about Jesus Christ, I read a Ripley's Believe It or Not book, <laughs> and it said Jesus Christ was a Jew. And I remember going to my parents with that and saying, is that true? And I got so mad. Jews today don't know about Jesus Christ. They don't know about the scriptures in the Old Testament. Uh, the Bible says, the scriptures say, the Jews will have spiritual scales over their eyes. And it's unfortunate. Now, you see, I had an excuse. Although I had an Orthodox training, I never read the scriptures. I never searched them. I knew the Bible stories and things of that nature, but I never searched them. Now I'm searching them. I'm reading the Old Testament. And page after page is nothing more than prophecy about Jesus Christ. It's all God's word, the Old Testament, the New Testament. And if a Jew, if a Christian, if anyone will just search the scriptures, it's life. What, what does he say in John? Uh, in the beginning was the word, and he was with God, and he was God, and the word became flesh. Well, this is God. This is God. And if someone will just read it, they'll experience that new birth. It's a very personal type thing. It's, it's between you and God. It's not between uh, you, Sid Roth, or you, Catherine Coleman, and God. You can go directly to God by reading his word. And the last few people that have uh, come to know Jesus Christ, that I had a chance to testify to, came to Christ from only one way. I gave them enough in seeing what the changes occurred to me to want to read the word. And when they read the word, 
they met Jesus Christ. And Sid Roth, today, you're a better Jew than you've ever been in your life. I like to use the term completed Jew. And yet, you and I are members of the same family, the same Heavenly Father, the same Messiah, the same wonderful Holy Spirit. How better can we tell you? I sit here so deeply moved by the words that Sid Roth has spoken. He has told you better than I have the ability to tell. And yet, neither one of us can tell it as the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. Whether you're Jew or Gentile, Jesus said you must be born again. You must be born again. There's no other way. Jesus is all that he said that he was, the very Son of the living God, the true Messiah. Won't you just now, whether you're kneeling, whether you're seated, just look up and just a little child come to him as Sid Roth came to him and just look up and say, Dear Jesus, I want to know you in that wonderful experience. I want peace of mind and peace of soul. Please come into my heart. It's so simple. It's so simple. He'll take those scales from off your eyes. And you'll know him in reality. Not just as an example, but the very person of the Son of God your Messiah. And when you know him like that, then you've just 